All right, guys, I have had some requests from some of you all to do uh, some more videos on the Johnson Controls controller configuration tool. So what I thought I would do is a basic overview of how to navigate inside CCT and give you a, a little bit better understanding about how to read the way that this is because this is not necessarily the easiest type of programming software to read, if, especially if you're new to it. It's kind of hard to follow the logic until you get familiar with it. So what we're going to do, we are in the panel here. This is what you will get when you open the software up. And we're just going to look at a basic VAV program. We're not going to do any programming. We're actually just going to open a file that already exists on the uh, computer here. So I'm just going to go up to File, and I'm going to select Open. And I'm just going to grab a VAV program uh, just at random. And we are going to look at how you can navigate some of the software blocks, that sort of thing, right inside CCT. And you're going to notice that many computers will struggle with this software. It, uh, if you don't have the processing power of the, uh, on your machine, it can be a little bit sluggish. Now, first off, I want you to notice the screen that has popped up here. We have the program open, but the first thing that it has done is given me this screen. So exactly what is this and what does it mean? Well, there are many different versions of CCT out there and the, a lot of software that has been written for these VAVs uh, that we have come from those older versions. Whenever you open a file that was written in an earlier version of CCT in a newer version, the first thing that it is going to do is ask you if you wish to upgrade that file to the current version. You can see here that the file version is 5.0 and the current version of CCT that we're using is 10.1. There have been changes inside the software you know, improvements, that sort of thing. Some may call them improvements. It just really depends. And it, it but it, this is going to ask you, do you want to upgrade the firmware to the newer version? Uh, in most cases, you generally try to leave the software inside the controller at the same version. However, there are a few occasions where you may want to upgrade them. In general, if I'm working on a controller, if there's a problem in it, most of the time I will upgrade to the latest version of CCT. If you call Johnson Controls, if you are working with one of their uh, tech support hotlines or one of their techs, and if you're having a particular issue, that may be one of the first things that they will have you to do is to try to upgrade that software. But let me tell you a little secret. Sometimes these upgrades can actually make problems worse. It's in a very minority amount of cases, but it does happen. If you have a controller that has a lot of custom programming in it, upgrades can cause issues depending on the type of programming and the logic and that sort of thing. It's rare, but it does happen. So that's something you may want to be aware of. For the purposes of this, we're going to go ahead and upgrade. If uh, just hit the yes button, and we have now uh, we've upgraded the controller. It's going in there and upgrading the firmware for us, and that's why the wheel is still spinning. But if you go to close this or anything, just like it is, it's going to ask you if you want to save it because of those changes. So, what do we have here? In the upper section of this screen is a, uh, we see here we have network inputs, hardware inputs, miscellaneous, uh, then we also have uh, set points, state controls, state, state generation, output control, outputs, and miscellaneous again over here. So what does all this stuff mean just in this upper block? Well, for example, here, the network inputs. I want you to notice what some of these are. These are points inside your system that 
may come from the Metasys system, Metasys server, that sort of thing. These are hardware or software points, basically, that are going to be passed to the controller through the network. That's what you're gonna find all in this side here on the network inputs. Uh, these are, again, software inputs. All, the only thing that you see here, like zone temperature set point, if you're familiar with Metasys, if you look at a VAV inside Metasys, you're going to see where you have a zone temp set point if it's pulled into the system. Tuning reset, all of this. Heating enable, this is stuff that you can see inside Metasys. Now, the next block is going to be inputs. We have here uh, zone temp, and we also have... Uh, temporary occupancy, that's what that TOC is. Warmer, cooler, adjust, what all of these are, these are direct hardware inputs to that particular device. This is an actual sensor. Uh, this is the warmer, cooler, adjust off of that sensor. You're reading velocity pressure, your discharge air temp. Those are all inputs directly to that controller. Uh, and that is something that you're going to get real familiar with when you're working with any kind of a PLC, any kind of a controller like this. We also have some miscellaneous inputs here. Now, generally, these may or may not be pulled into Metasys extended architecture. It just really depends on how you use your system. And what this is, is gonna be feedback from the controller into the programming is what we're seeing with these. As far as damper percentage, uh, heating percentage, basically the controller is telling itself what these devices are doing. Now let's go over to the far right. What we have on the far right of this screen is the outputs. This is going to be the, uh, of course, if we had lighting control, as you see here, this is a relay output for a lighting relay. We have our heating valve here. Uh, this is going to be what controls the reheat valve. Now, there are several different ways. We're not looking at the actual hardware points themselves yet, but we will here shortly but this is the output for the heating valve for the reheat. And again, this is just a VAV. When you get into some of your air handlers, some of your other systems, there's quite a list here. Uh, the occupancy mode, this is a software point, all right? This is not a hardware point, this is a software point. It's again, the controller telling itself what it's doing. Uh, we have the damper output. This is going to be for the, the integrated damper on this particular VAV. That's going to be what moves that uh, actuator and opens that damper to get flow uh, to your space. And we have here the miscellaneous outputs. Again, this is the controller telling itself what it's doing, that sort of thing. And all in the middle here, this is part of where all of the magic happens is in all of this. So what is all of this? Your set points, your logic blocks, that sort of thing, that's where all of this is going to fall, is inside this. Most of the time when you write a program, a lot of this is gonna be generated for you and then you will simply go in and manipulate it to what you need it to do. Now, one thing that you will run into when you're trying to troubleshoot a particular device is you're gonna to need to know what particular logic blocks will control an output or control what you're trying to do. All right, so a way to discover that is quite simple. We're gonna look at this heating output, for example. This point right here. I want to know exactly what is controlling the heating valve on this VAV. So now that I have it highlighted, what I'm going to do is actually right click and I get this little window here. From this window, I can go into the details and it will be, sometimes you get this kind of little pop-up thing here. Uh, that actually was the delete. We don't want to delete it, so let's try that again. I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to View Details. Inside the View Details window, we have here exactly what this is. You can modify this if necessary. Uh, for example, if I wanted to go and to uh, reverse the direction of this actuator, I would hit the Edit button, and then from here, 
uh, depending on the actuator, depending on the valve, I can reverse the direction that that actuator travels right here. It's very simple to do. It also, it's going to give you some other information about that. You can rename it and that sort of thing. So we're just going to cancel out and close this window just like this. Now, what I want to know, however, as I mentioned earlier, what is it inside this programming that is controlling this heating output? Right click, go down to show involvement. When I click that, it is going to highlight every one of the logic blocks that influence this particular output. You can see here, proportional heating control. All right, this is the first block that we've come to that's going to influence the way that this is uh, controlled. Now, to go along with what we're seeing here, we also need to look down here at our bottom panel. And again, this is where CCT is not the easiest software to navigate. I want to see exactly how those connections are set up. So I've got these tabs across the top here and I am simply going to click on the connections tab. Inside this connections tab is where it is where everything is linked. I'm, I'm simply going to click this and you can see on the output this is all of the connections to my output. I'm simply following this logic back. You can see here the proportional box heating control. Uh, and the port is percent command. We will look a little more in detail on that here shortly. This is the actual output here. This is the input to this particular block and this is what is controlling it. So we're going to look now inside this proportional box heating control. When I click on it, you're going to notice this panel down here change. Alright, here is all of the connections to this particular panel. Uh, this particular logic block here. You can see here that we have, we're looking at zone temperature. It's going into the process variable and all of these other blocks are connected to this particular logic blocks. If you check out some of my other videos, you're actually going to see how I make the connections to the individual logic blocks, these individual points inside here. Uh, it's very simple, but we're not going to modify this particular program. So, we need to look a little closer into this. I want to highlight this, which it already is highlighted. So what I'm going to do is right click it again. I'm going to go down here to View Logic. Okay, when I hit the View Logic, we have quite an interesting change. And to make it a little easier for us, I'm going to drag this down some and then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag it down also. Okay, to give us a little bit better view. All right, now looking in this window, we can see some of the variables here. We can see all of these inputs here. You see these yellow arrows. Well, this is what they are right here. If you'll notice, these are identical to what these, uh, what you see here. So, these are the connection points inside this logic block. All right, heating out state. This this section here is basically the mode section. When you click on one of these states, you're going to notice something change. Right? When I highlight this, you can see that this is the off state. Uh, this is basically going to control the percent command, the control status, that sort of stuff. This is a state-based logic block. If I double-click into here, you can see that the default value for this is zero. That means when the box is unoccupied that it's just going to close that valve. Now, when I select the next section under max, you can see it changing as well. Very little here. But when I click into here, you're going to see that the present value for this is 100. So when this particular box is in the maximum heating, it's going to command that valve to 100%. Then there's limited max. Uh, we also have hold. And all of these are basically the different states of this particular logic block. This is all controlled by the mode input to this logic block. Okay, 
this mode input is going to come from another logic block further out in the control in the, in, in the process when I click on the control section of this you can see here we have more more logic that's here this is the PID loop when the VAV is occupied when it's just trying to control zone set point and again this can be just a little bit confusing as far as how a lot of this works within the system it's state-based control uh, it basically it has its own individual logic block for the particular controller for the particular set within that controller that it's trying to do and you can see here we have a PID preprocessor we have the PID loop control uh, heating cooling that's going to depend again on the mode of the VAV we have our set point the process variable process variable is the zone temperature now let's look a little closer at that you can see it highlighted here on our screen now when I go down here you can see the zone temperature is coming in here process variable alright that's where we would be looking at the input at that thermostat that is in the room connected to this controller alright now this is just uh, part of the way that this works again this is just one output this is just a heating output for this particular VAV just to kind of give you an idea of how in-depth some of this stuff goes if I double click into the PID loop I can see a little bit more information about it and if you check out some of my other videos I go into more detail about what some of these points do depending on how you're using the logic block you may or you may not use everything that is inside one of these PID loops this is just going to be a brief overview you can spend entire days on uh, the way that these individual blocks can work this is a PID preprocessor what this is going to do is basically tell the PID loop what it's going to be doing and if I double click into it you can see some of the same kind of information here uh, process ID it's zone temp control that sort of thing if I were to drop this down which I have to hit my edit button before it's gonna let me do that this right here is all of the different types of information that the PID loop can control this particular port here is what it uh, is going to be identified as if you're gonna be controlling zone temp discharge air temp all that sort of thing this PID pre P I can't talk for today uh, this PID loop preprocessor is what tells the PID loop exactly what it's going to be doing again this is some of the basic steps inside this this is just basically giving you a little understanding of how to navigate again this main block is going to be controlled by the particular mode the particular mode is going to be controlled by another logic block and then this is kind of gets confusing down in here when you're looking at this sometimes these do not identify themselves very clearly as far as where the connection points are it's just the nature of the beast on this there's been many days that I have had to dig through logic inside a controller that uh, you know I'm trying to find a particular control block that something is being controlled by but be aware of that you know these can be just a little bit confusing you can also have duplicates you can have the same label on something down here that's inside another logic block and it just makes it kind of difficult at times trying to figure out exactly what's going on and another thing you can do too if you are inside here and you're needing a little more workspace up here in the upper right of your screen you can see these two little points here if I want to maximize this screen I click here and it gets rid of that connection panel just like that if I want to bring that connection panel back I simply click on it again it's the same down here I can maximize this also I can move them individually just like that up and down that sort of thing it's very simple over here if I were going to go in and change this logic around if I wanted to add something all of this in this panel here is some of the logic blocks some of the logic gates and that sort of thing that I can use you can see here and gate not or just all the stuff down in here calculations if I'm needing to do some math in here for whatever reason all of that will be found here inside this panel here 
This is kind of a navigation tree as far as where you are inside the program. Uh, the more you use this, the more familiar you will become with it. Now, if I wanted to go back to my previous screen, all I've got to do is go up here and hit the control button. I'm not really going to go into a lot of this other stuff just yet. Uh, check out some of my other videos and you will see more detail on some of those. That brings me back to this control screen here. Again, I have all of my connections down here that you can see. And we're going to bring this up just slightly to where we can get a little bit better look at this. Uh, you see here that this was just one of the logic blocks that is affecting our heating output. You also see the others. The PID loop tuning, uh, we saw that on the network input. If we had uh, problems with this particular zone not maintaining set point, we could simply hit that tuning reset and it's going to go through and basically clean out the values inside that PID loop to where it will basically start from scratch. It will relearn where it is and where it needs to be. If I highlight this, you can see my connections here changed and it tells me exactly where this is coming from. Inside your PID loops, we'll go back in there and look in it for just a moment. I'm going to view my logic again and inside the PID loops, go back down to control, I have the option for retuning those. All right, I'm gonna double click inside this PID loop. And what it is, uh, let's see here. It take me just a second to find it, but it is buried in here. This PID loop tuning, reset tuning right here. That point is connected to this reset tuning inside this PID loop. It's gonna change all the PID loop values back to default and then allow the system to relearn where it is. So we will go back to our control. And again, that's this connection here. If I click on this again, if I go down here, you can see PID tuning reset uh, right down here. It's where it connects inside that PID loop. All right, now here, this is where this particular block is connected to the network input. All right, it passes from this into this into that PID loop through here. Some of the other things that are going to affect that heating output is box heating, override check. There's just a lot of this stuff that plays into what that particular output does. Also, the occupied mode, if it's unoccupied, naturally it's not going to be heating as well. But that's just one way to see how the logic flows inside of these, inside of the software. And again, it is not the most user friendly. It can be a challenge to find particular things that you're looking for inside CCT. But let's move on to a few other things you're going to need to know about. Inside this, up here you have a, uh, the hardware definitions, the define hardware tab. This is another very important section. All right, we're not going to be able to cover every single nook and cranny of CCT, but there are things that you will be dealing with regularly, and that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So I'm going to click on that hardware tab, and you can see that this panel here has popped up. What this panel does is it's going to give me the option to select the type of controller that this program is going into here. It's going to suggest a controller uh, just off the bat. When you write a program, it's going to suggest a particular type of controller and you may or may not use that controller. It just depends on the application. So that will be done from right here, from this panel here. You can see that we have a VAV selected. Uh, we have a system name and that sort of thing. If I hit the select button here, it populates this window here and it tells me about some of the different types of controllers that are out there. Uh, you can see that it's not just VAVs. We have FECs down through here. Each of those FECs have a uh, different set of inputs and outputs and that sort of thing, different configurations, different numbers of analog inputs versus different numbers of uh, binary inputs, that sort of thing. So you have to select the particular controller for the application that you're doing. Uh, and again, you may have to add additional IOs, that sort of thing. 
and what you would do there, say if I needed to add an additional input output module to this device, which in some cases we have, we have added IOMs to VAVs just depending on what is uh, happening within the system, what we need for the application. We will do that right here. I will simply select add a device and you can see here the first list is input output modules. If I'm going to be controlling other things from that VAV and I need more hardware points, this is where I could add that controller. I would simply highlight it, hit OK, and then it would add that to this particular controller. And then I could do whatever I needed to do inside the logic uh, to control those inputs and outputs, you know, just depending on what it's running. This is the first page that you're going to see under this. The second page is the point assignments. Again, this is going to be just the most critical aspects of what you're going to regularly run into and be dealing with in CCT. Inside the point assignments, this is where your individual points are going to be landed on the controller. We see here input one is going to be the discharge air temperature. If you look at a VAV, that first input that is on it, there's a pair of wires going out to that discharge air temperature sensor. Okay, it's that simple. Input two, we see velocity pressure. Inside that controller, those pressure sensors are generally internal to those controllers. They can be replaced, but they are, uh, they do come in on an input. And uh, it plugs directly into the board inside of the VAV itself on many models. Uh, if you are using a dual duct system, you may have an additional discharge air velocity pressure sensor mounted remotely that will read pressure from the other set of ductwork. And then we have our outputs. Right here, heating output for this one, uh, heating demand. These here you're seeing that we have two particular outputs for this. Well, this type of actuator uses two binary outputs to move. It is an incremental actuator. Uh, when you move one direction, one output closes. When you move the other direction, another output will, the other output will close. And you may see these depending on your VAV where it's a zero to 10, then it would simply be an analog output to your device. You can see that this one is an incremental, it's 24 volt AC, incremental, start, stop, that sort of thing. All right, if it's a zero to 10, it would be down here where you would uh, see your heating output. These two points here, these are configurable outputs. They're currently not used in this particular VAV. The damper outputs. Now, the connection for the damper outputs, again, is internal to the VAV. You're not gonna see a pair of wires going from this down into itself. I mean, it's all done internally. However, if you are looking at a dual duct system, you may see a set of outputs for the actuator that the VAV is controlling on this. This, again, is just a brief overview of your inputs and outputs and how it's going to relate to a controller. Again, folks, this is just a VAV. Some of the others are, uh, these can be quite full. Uh, the more controllers that you have, the more IOMs, that sort of thing, that's what you're going to find there. Now, our network settings is going to be our third tab here. Uh, CCT is very network sensitive, I guess you could say. This particular address, the device address here, whatever you have those jumpers set for inside that controller for your network settings, for your, if it's on a backnet network, if it's on N2, this needs to match. If it does not match, you're not going to be able to load this controller. It will not let you. That way you don't, uh, it helps to ensure that you don't load the wrong program into the wrong controller. So whatever you're doing, in your system, if you have a VAV that is addressed at 77, then you need to set this device address here at 77. If you address your VAV at 25, this needs to be at 25 also. It must match for that particular controller. Now then, there are a lot of other options here that uh, we're not really going to get into in this particular system. I want to stay focused on just what you're going to see. And depending on what you're doing in your system, this is another one that you may run into. If I wanted to set this up where it is going to be used on an N2 system, this is where I would go in and do that. 
uh, you know, with a lot of the legacy controllers going away, uh, being harder to get, you can still get some out of the repair shops, but they are becoming more difficult. Some people are choosing to upgrade to the newer controllers. If you're putting a newer controller onto an N2 network, this is where you're going to get into having to set up your points where you can pull them into Mattis's from here. You can see when I hit that create button, it has just populated all of this. Uh, you can see here data points and all of that stuff that is inside here. And this is what I would use to be able to pull those points into Mattis's. But again, we're not going to be going in uh, much detail on that. I did a video a while back on how to do that. So you might want to check out my channel to see that. So we're just going to close this out. Uh, it's going on to try to close it. It will give me not available, configure mode required, all changes saved or cancel, blah, 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 that sort of stuff. I'm going to hit cancel. I hit the cancel there and then I'm going to exit just like that. But that is uh, some of the basic points of trying to follow this programming. And then again, folks, this programming, it takes a little while to get used to, so do not be discouraged. If I'm going to load a controller, so if I'm going to push this out to the controller, I'm going to go right here, I'm going to press load, and it's the first thing that it's going to do is ask me if I wanted to save the changes. So if I was going to be loading this program, what I would do here is select how I was going to be loading it, if I was going to be connected through the Bluetooth adapter, or if I was going to be doing it through the Ethernet, that sort of thing, this is where I would select that option. And it is the same if I were going to upload a program. If uh, I had nothing here and I wanted to upload a program out of a controller, I would hit that load button and it would give me the option to upload. But guys, this is just the uh, basic way of navigating the software. The more you use it, the more familiar with it you will become. It takes a while to really understand how the logic flows inside of this. Uh, it takes a little while before uh, you get used to it, before you get used to modifying programs and that sort of thing. Uh, you accept the fact that you're going to make mistakes. Uh, one thing that I would strongly suggest you do is regularly save your work. If you have a program that you have uploaded from a controller that you're needing to modify, save that as a different file name. That way if something happens, you can at least get your controller back to running the way it was previously. Anyways guys, hope you liked the video. Drop any questions down below in the comments. Also be sure to subscribe, check out all the other videos on my channel. Check out the links down below guys. I have a link uh, down there to where, uh, to Amazon where you can look at some of the different tools that I regularly use. I have put links to those down there in the comments, so check those out. Be sure to subscribe, check out the other videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.